I took a job with a temporary agency. I interviewed, you know, had three people in front of me. I'm talking to these guys. And they, so they asked me all these questions. And I just basically telling them my story. I was like, listen, you know, by the grace of God, I'm here. July 24th, they gave me a job offer for like $24 an hour. My name is Kendrick Fulton. I'm from Texas. I'm 48 years old. In 2003, I was sentenced to 400 months in federal prison. I was released in September of 2020 after serving 17 years to home confinement under the CARES Act. January of 2020. The Federal Bureau of Prisons implements a pattern score. They score you as a, a minimum risk, a low risk, a medium, and a high risk. April 2020, then Attorney General Bill Barr puts out a memo. He says that everyone with a minimum pattern score who has served 50% of their sentence or who has an underlying health condition can be put in for home confinement. I mean, you couldn't have anything in your background to be eligible for this program. If you were a minimum pattern score and you came up on their list in DC, they will call an institution. Like, hey, get, why is this person still here? Get this person out of here. Each case is, is, is different. You know, in my particular case, you know, I'm at right now 18 years and five months with another decade left. I knew something was gonna come up and they're gonna come say we made a mistake and you can't go home. The way my case manager was scoring me, he was treating all drug crimes as violent. If you had a drug case, it was violent. In all fairness to him, he didn't know. So I had to take him to the statute. You know, we showed him, hey, listen, even the federal government doesn't treat drug crimes as violent. Beginning in the early 1990s, Congress enacted a law that treated crack and powder differently. Crack was treated 100 times worse than powder. So basically, if you had five grams of crack, which is maybe a package of sugar, or if you had a pound of cocaine, which is 500 grams, you were treated the same. You were subject to the same mandatory minimum, which was back then was five years. I was sentenced for 50 grams of crack, which at the time was only subject to a mandatory minimum of 10 years. But the way federal law works, once the jury went home, they loaded me up. I went from 50 grams to 10,000 grams as sentencing. So in other words, I went from 10 years to 33 years. Typically I have a, a 300 feet radius. And if I go more than 300 feet from the house, my monitor starts to alert. I can only travel a 100-mile radius. Uh, like when I'm at work, I can go no further than San Antonio. So those are my limitations right now on home confinement, and I'm hoping that those will change soon. Right now, we're going to pick up my son, Kendrick. So uh, yeah, I'm going to pick him up. He's flying in from Houston. My oldest son, I hadn't seen him yet. He hadn't had a chance to come down. so. My first ministry is the family. That's first and foremost, just being around my kids, you know, uh, it's not too much I can do to make up uh, lost time, but just going forward, you know, they can just, you know, get to know their dad and, you know, uh, just get to be around them. That would be good. It actually turned out to be a nice day. It turned out to be a nice day. Dang. I got to go watch the thing. Okay, okay. Don't trip. So, today I went and picked up this suit because I want to get back to 
kind of how it was before I left, so this is what I picked up. I think I'm gonna look pretty good in it. I like the color. I think it's gonna fit me well. Feels good. Been a long time. About 2002, 2001, 20 years easy. Not bad. Definitely not any khaki. It's definitely not any, nothing brown. So it has been a long time, you know, wearing khaki suits and sweatsuits, jogging suits, stuff like that. You know, this is, this is just one step to, to being normal. Bubba, come tell me what you think. Yeah, I like the color, man, you know, it's different. It's convincing compared to what I used to wear. Easy some gators. Need some gators? Yeah. And I'll be back? Yeah, you be back. I'm back? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's the best thing and it's the worst thing being on home confinement because you hear stories of people being sent back for just minor violations. So I'm at right now 18 years and five months. I'm out here working, uh, I have benefits, I pay taxes. I, I would like to know their reasoning. You know, they would say, you know, go back to prison. So I don't need I need to season the chicken or what? Uh nah, because we it's gonna be mixed in with this uh with that. Yeah. So we're in the culinary arts class, right? Mm -hmm. And they have a knife. You know, this is prison. Yeah. So you know they got a knife, but it's like chained to the table. Yeah. We will learn how to fillet fish, how to hold the gills back and do all that. So yeah, it was yeah. I was under, what, four different administrations. I've heard what a lot of politicians have said, but I've had enough of what you say. It's more about what you do. I just wish they would understand that these are real people's lives that they're affecting. You know, it's real families with children, mothers, grandmothers, daughters, sons that are really just counting on their, you know, they, 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 their loved ones to be home. You got it? It says push. Let me see. Yeah, I got it. You don't want to mess your nails up. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't got your nails done, so. Of all things, I thought relief would come from the courts, and they came from an uh, emergency uh, pandemic. Over the years of dealing with the federal government, it's kind of like you expect the worst. You hope for the best, but you expect the worst. To me, growing up, I thought it was normal to have a dad in prison. Like, I didn't understand that that's not normal. So I, I thought your dad was supposed to be in prison, supposed to call you, you know? The, the phone was gonna hang up after 15 minutes. I thought that was normal, you know? But as I got older, I started to understand that, that it's not normal. When my dad went to prison, I was uh, three going on four. Right now, I'm, uh, I'm 22 years old. It was kind of confusing because in the media, a prisoner, an inmate, like that's like a bad person. And my dad is like the farthest thing from a, a bad person. So it was really confusing growing up. I, I actually don't dwell on the past too much. It's, it's, it's already done, it's already over with, I can't go back and change it. So I'm just looking towards the future, see what we can do in the future together. You know, I don't have three years left, two years left, four years left, I have a whole decade left. Let that cook for a minute. Are we done with this bell pepper? Are we done cutting stuff? Yeah, that's it. That's everything? Yeah. During the election, President Biden made a bunch of promises. Promises that affect my sentence and the sentence of others. One of the uh, promises made was to yeah. reduce the prison population yeah. and to use the executive authority to grant clemency to people who are serving unduly long sentences. He could release more people in one day in history. So the ball is in his court. I'm hopeful he'll do the right thing, though. I'm hopeful. 